salutations, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. V back with another casted game of Age of Empires 3, featuring two high-level players who have not faced off on this channel as of yet. So let's not dilly or dally, but instead jump right into the player introductions in the south of the map, playing in the color red as the Aztecs. We have Kanesi, who uh, I think is pretty much now known for his Aztec play. There is going to be a warrior boom. I am calling it now. I have never seen this man do anything except a warrior boom and already getting the TP down. I feel pretty confident in that prediction, but his opponent is a bit more unpredictable because in the north of the map, playing in the color blue as the French, we have Aliug. Now, I have not seen a lot of this guy play, though the last game I saw was a 59-minute slugfest over on Lion Arts channel. It was Aliug versus Revnak. I will not spoil the ending. That would not be fair of me, but you need to go check it out. Probably one of the best Lionheart games I've ever seen and just an absolute slobber knocker. So hopefully we get a game as entertaining as that for this one. Kinesi, also a fantastic player. And so I, I think we're in for some good times here. Three CDBs coming in for Alia again. Look at that deck. Oh, that's delicious. We have a native deck, ladies and gentlemen. Some cards here that you might not be familiar with. Let me give you the tour. We have Team French Auxiliaries Combat. Boosts your native HP and damage by 10%. You have Native Treaties, which gives you a shipment of natives for every trading post you have. That you'll see in a few more French decks than just this one. You have Native Warrior Combat, another 15% HP and attack damage boost. In H3, you have Native Warriors, which is going to cut the cost by 25% in wood, food, and coin. And then you have Blood Brothers, which automatically gives all Native Warriors an upgrade in HP and build limits and upgrades them to champion level for free. Wow. <laughs> so we are undoubtedly seeing native play here and he's got the right map to do it. He has the house of Vasa where he could get the torps for economy, but he could also train the Royal Arcubus. He could train the winged Hussars in age three. And he also has the Tatar house. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it so he can get Tatars in age two and the shock riders as well. So he has uh, access to some pretty good native units. And with those upgrades, if he's allowed to stack them, they can get really scary, especially since native units don't cost population. So you stack that on the military count that France can already put out, and you are looking at an insane amount of units. But against Aztec, I mean, Kinesi is well versed in Aztec. He's usually on the defensive, getting his boom done. And when he gets out of mass, he can be really scary. He loves to go for the Entente and Slingers, sometimes to his detriment because he doesn't always make enough anti-cav. But this man... He is nothing to trifle with. So we'll have to see if this more unorthodox play from Aliug catches Kinesi off guard. Kinesi going with the messenger for the fast age up. Aliug going with the standard quartermaster. And what did Kinesi send as his first card? Three villagers. He's got one shipment stacked. Going to get another by the time he reaches the second age. And it's going to be either 700 wood, three warrior priest, or three warrior priest, 700 wood. Come on, there it is. 700 wood, and that three warrior priest is going to slam down in a few seconds, even going for a Vasa trading post himself, probably solely for the extra torps you can buy from that trading post, and probably not for any units. And come on, three warrior priest. Kinesi, I know you. Come on, I know you. You're way too predictable, my friend. Send them. No, he's sending. No, come on. You thought about it. You know. You know what to send. Come on, Kinesi. Send it. Send the three warrior priests. Oh, he's, 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 he's licking his lips. He wants to send it. I mean, five bills would also be viable. Is he going to send? No, man, he was faking me out. He was teasing me. He teased me a couple times. He said, oh, I might send five villagers. Nope. Slams down three warrior priests. And he is going to be going for that beautiful XP boom after he collects that 700 wood. Aliug, meanwhile, what did he send as his first card? Sent native treaties. 
before 4 CDB, before 700 wood, before 700 coin. This is the native build of native builds. And uh, wow. Okay, so he's going to be getting that shipment of natives. What does he have coming across the map? A very unorthodox army. He's got four royal arquebusiers. He's got two Lipka Tatars. And he's got one shock rider. So let me introduce you to these guys. These arquebus are a more tanky, less damaging skirmisher. They have 12 ranged attack, 15 range, 150 HP, and 10% range resistance. Meanwhile, these Tatars, very fast at seven speed, 30% range resistance, and they have 12 ranged attack. Meanwhile, the Shock Riders, they have 25 hand attack. Oh my gosh. 10% range resistance and 10% melee resistance and 253 HP. And with Native Warrior Combat now coming in for Aeliug, they are only going to get stronger. Torps coming down for both players. If you have House of Vasa on that map, no matter what Civ you are, you really have no excuse Excuse to not go for it. It is so cost effective. It is such a burst to your economy. It's the same way if you get a Cree settlement, you gotta go for those extra CDBs. You really can't afford not to, especially if your opponent is going to. So Aeliug going for CDB after native treaties, then sending the native warrior combat. And already these guys' upgrades are starting to stack. The Tatars up to 161, the Archibus up to 173 HP, and the Shock Rider up to 291. One HP in H2. Holy crap. Making more Tatars has not gotten any successful raids yet. These natives are not the best raiding units, but in mass, they can be very effective, especially when they keep getting stacked with these upgrades. But we do have to remember that the Aztec have those annoying warriors. These guys, they can be the bane of your existence. You waste so much time fighting these guys while the Aztec economy continues to boom. 22 CDBs for Aeliug versus 27 Vils for Kinesi. And now out come the Entente and Slingers, and they will do fairly well against this native mass so far. The War Chief being an absolute nuisance. And when those Slingers come out, they should be able to deal with these Tatars, but they're in enough of a number, and they do have quite a bit of HP for a goon unit in H2. Puma Spearman now going down. And I think this is going to be a fairly even trade, though if uh, Aelia picks up this War Chief, never mind. That is an excellent trade for Aelia, 100 XP just like that. 600 coin coming in for Kinesi, maybe macroing for an age up here, more villagers coming out for Aelia. No units in production just yet, but he's starting to get a decent trade. The Swedish Archibusiers able to tank so much damage from these unupgraded slingers. And look at that, just like that, the Entente and shipment is being put down, but at the same time, Kinesi's economy has not stalled very much. Most of his villagers are staying at work. He's collecting a lot of wood. He's got quite a bit of coin in bank, though he probably won't use much of it. Uh, what he needs right now is food, and he does have a couple of exposed hunts here, now getting a market down to shield himself from cavalry raids, but he's going to want to keep both sides protected here. He doesn't want these natives coming in and getting a quick kill. The Puma's trying to get the trade post, and they are going to go down to these Tatars, and that is a very nice trade, even going to save his Vasa trading post. Next, sending Wilderness Warfare, going to increase his native warriors by another 20%, so he's got another upgrade in here. I did not know Wilderness Warfare also improved native warriors. That's going to add 20% hit points, and it's going to upgrade his CDBs at the same time, and if he mixes in skirmishers, upgrade those as well. Such a good card. If you're a French player and you're new, consider adding this to your deck. What does he got here? He's got Royal Fencing School. Okay. Okay. Sends three Royal Musketeers, all infantry uh, trains faster. I don't know if he'll end up sending that. He's stacking Wilderness Warfare with Team French Auxiliary Combat. So he's just going 100% into natives, but is he investing too heavily? The Aztec army is growing, more slingers coming out, doing a good job keeping his vill safe. I like how he has two separate hunts here, so if he's being pressured on this side, he can gather on this side and vice versa. A very, very well protected coin mine here, another coin mine which has almost been fully torped, and the war hut is nicely tucked in between these tree lines and these buildings, so really, really smart base building from uh, Kinesi here, and he does have a two TP stagecoach, so lots of economy coming in from Aztec. 28 CDBs versus 31 Vils, but we do have to add the two trading posts, which are about four Vils apiece. 
And let's see, is Kinesi? Yes, he's reaching age three now. I was just gonna check if he was macroing for it, but look at that, beating me to the punch. And Kinesi just playing as Kinesi does. But now there is a lot of native units here, and even though they don't have a veteran upgrade, they have been stacked with at least three cards. So this is gonna be a lot more even of a fight than you might think. Now double on Taunt and Slinger's coming out. This is what he needs, right? He needs to contest with these Royal Archibusiers, and he's immediately getting the elite upgrade, wasting no time. And that's the thing I love about Kinesi, right? He always has the resources to get his upgrades. He never shirks. The minute he reaches age three, the upgrades slam down and uh, just just goes to show this guy knows his Aztecs probably better than anybody else on the ladder right now. But these Archibusiers, they're still so tanky. 283 HP on a skirmisher unit. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, 19 ranged attack. 4.5 speed, 10% melee resist, though that doesn't really matter, and 15 range. These guys are ridiculous. They can shoot their way through so many Entauntans before they even get scratched. And you can see the trades here. Very few of these Archibusiers went down and a ton of Entauntans were killed. Luckily for Kinesi, that's what Entauntans are built to do, right? They're cheap, they're easily masked, and a lot of them can die, but they're still cost effective. So. A lot of Lipkar Tartars here, very smart by Aeliog not getting them engaged. They would not have traded well against the uh, Entauntans. And these guys are not cheap, 70 food, 60 wood. The Archbusiers are 70 food and 30 wood. But we do have to remember that these guys also get upgrades as they get kills. So some of these guys are already at triple gold rank, though some of them are not upgraded at all. So that's another thing to keep in mind about natives is these guys can stack, all right, and they can get even scarier. So we look at a triple uh, gold here, 316 HP, 21 ranged attack versus an unupgraded and only 218 HP and I think uh, 12 ranged attacks. So really, really substantial if you can get those guys into combat, which it pays for Aeliug to keep these guys engaged, right? Keep getting them upgrades. And meanwhile, continuing to poke in, but the Entauntan mass is starting to get a little bit out of control. But again, we've seen Kinesi before. We've seen him make this mistake where he pushes in too far with just light infantry, and then he gets bowled over. We saw it in the Loppy game where he was absolutely destroyed destroyed by the Takala Pop. Let's see if he does that. No, he's deciding to pull back and maybe realizes that he doesn't have enough of a composition to push out yet. He needs protection because now that Aeliug is in H3, we could see Wing Tassars, which will ruin these Entauntans. And what's coming in? The Shock Riders. These guys aren't quite as good as the Wing Tassars, but if they get that charge ability off, they will still be able to get a decent trade. Let's see what happens here. It looks like Aeliog might be deciding to engage. Shock Rider coming in, but concentrated on taunt and fire. Even these guys cannot stand up to it. And now we see Lipka Tartars coming out from Kinesi as well. Kinesi going for the native play. Not something I predicted. And even getting out some Eagle Runner Knights as well. These guys, excellent anti-cav. They are basically the Aztec Musketeer, and they do a nice job at it as well. Meanwhile, what is Aeliog making? More veteran wing to SARS, more shock riders. And does he have any more upgrades to send? Yes, he has sent native warriors. So now they are all 25% cheaper in each resource. And so now we see that these Swedish Archibusers are now uh, only 53 food and 23 wood. And for what you're getting, that is an insane deal. That's close to a, a price of a crossbowman. And you're getting such a better unit. So... I'm not saying that this native play is the best. I'm not saying that it beats standard play. I'm just saying it's something to watch for. So let's see what else happens here. There's now a mix of veteran wing to SARS, 672 HP. Oh my Lanta. Oh, they have a Lance charge of 59 attack and then a regular hand attack of 39. Oh man, if these guys get a clean charge into this group of Entauntans, it is going to be a massacre. 
Meanwhile, it looks like Ancien Regime coming in for Aliug, so possibly going to mix in some Royal Embassy units as well. And Kinesi trying to get down a Noble Hut, maybe he wants to get out some Jaguars, or maybe even some Arrow Knights, but I don't know what those Arrow Knights would be super useful for. And the Elite Ententans now starting to get pretty beefy themselves for what they are. I mean, this is a 40 food, 30 wood, and you're getting 100 HP, and you're getting a lot of attack for what you are buying. So both players investing in very cost-effective units. One is a small army with a lot of power. One is a big army, which individually is not strong, but collectively almost feels impossible to kill. Let's take a look at the economies. 38 CDB for Aeliug and 47 for Kinesi. Both now have, no, okay, Aeliug still does not have Stagecoach TP. So he's only getting XP here which does mean that there is going to be a slight advantage for the economy, not only in villagers, but in the TPs for Kinesi. And what else is he getting here now? Just continuing to get upgrades. Order of Vasa still clicking. Double on Tauntons, both trading posts on wood, so playing this very, very efficiently. Great macro here from Kinesi. Aeliug trying to get a raid in, but another Noble Hut going down on this side of the map, securing another coin mine, and these Arrow Knights will do well against this mass of cavalry. I don't think Aeliug wants to get engaged there just yet, getting one of his Lip Tartars killed, but where is the mass of Archibusers? These guys are powerful, but remember, uh, Aelia can only make so many of them. He can only make how many? He can make 14 only, and he's already maxed out that build. Possibly going to try to take out this trading post. Now, one thing I don't know is if he takes out the trading post, can he make more? I am not sure about that. Now sending cavalry combat as well. And that's another thing. This cavalry combat effect... Native Cavalry, we'll have to see. We'll keep a look on these guys. Right now, Veteran Asar at 672. And when that card arrives, we will see if that affects the native units. I think it will. I don't think Aeliug would send it if it didn't. He is now double producing Veteran Royal Dragoons, which is going to be a nice mix up to his composition. Though I don't know what Kinesi's going for at this point. And upgrade about to drop. Yes, now 731 HP for the Winged Asars. Going for a little raid here is Kinesi. He wants to take out these native posts. He knows that that is what Aeliug has invested in. These are going to be his main production facilities. And so he wants to deal with them as fast as possible. He now has enough siege in these Prowler Knights and these Eagle Runners to do it. And let's see if the main Entauntan army comes in. Oh my god, that's so many Entauntans. Look at this. He's got 69. Let's go. Entauntan Slingers. And uh, that's going to be tough to deal with. The Royal Musketeers, they are a powerful unit, but they will be easily countered by the Slingers. Another card coming in here for Kinesi, continuing to send Slingers. No, he's sending the Temple of Sintiotl support, which is going to give him Slingers, but also going to upgrade those Slingers as well. Now sending Knight hit points on top of that. So Kinesi upgrading in terms of long-term investment for his army and uh, even getting 12 Slingers at the same time. That's such a good card, such a good card for Aztec. They are in such... A powerful spot right now in the current meta. And this might be the fight we've been looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, if the cavalry can get engaged, Aeliug knows he needs a clean charge. He needs those Eagle Runner Knights to be out of the way. He needs to purely land on the Entauntans. And if he can do that, he will absolutely massacre them. However, if those Eagle Runner Knights intercept, if the Prowler Knights intercept, those cavalry will get a very, very bad trade. So the 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 big finale, I can feel it coming. It's building up triple on Tauntons coming out from Kinesi, continuing to spam that unit, and triple veteran Royal Dragoons coming out as well for Aeliug. I'm not so sure about that. There's not a lot in this Aztec army that these Dragoons are made to counter. And so maybe just trying to get out as many units as possible. All right, the Order of Vasa ability has now come in. Are we going to see a big fight? Takes out the French Explorer. That's going to be really helpful. That Explorer can no longer tank damage when this main fight comes. Is it going to happen? Oh, the cavalry are licking their chops. They want a clean engagement. Oh, no. So much free damage from the Entauntans here. So many of the Royal Musketeers going down. And these guys are not cheap. Meanwhile, veteran Royal Dragoons joining the fray. 
but they will be killed fairly easily by everything Aztec has here. And now the engagement has come in, but I don't think this is the engagement Aliug wants. I think he feels like he's lost too much infantry here. He has to engage, but this mass, how do you even work your way through this Aztec mass? It's like diving into a pit of mud and trying to clean it out with your bare hands. And this cavalry is going to run into a stone wall. They have killed the first three ranks, but they are going to be stopped there. All of these expensive native units are going to go down as well as these Royal Dragoons. And yes, they can get into melee, but they are going to be absolutely obliterated by the Aztec infantry stack, which is what we like to see Kinesi go for 100% of the time. Oh man, he loves his Entontons, man. This dude this dude is in love with this Slinger unit. I think all Aztec players are. They are one of the most efficient units in the game. They get such good trades. They are the native Strelit, though I think they might even be more efficient than Strelits. I may have committed blasphemy in the chat just now, but let me know. Are Entontons more efficient than even Strelits? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, but meanwhile, this stack, I mean, it has been weakened, but it is still at a mass where it's not going to be able to be stopped by these small masses of native units. And these native units, they are powerful, but they cannot be produced quickly. And look at the unreal, oh my God. The reinforcing slinger mass coming in from the south and the wing to Sars, they are overwhelmed. The charge of the Hussars. Nope, no siege of Vienna today, ladies and gentlemen. They are going to get Stonewall. Man, if the Ottomans had some Entente and Slingers at that siege, would have been a whole different ball game. And look at that. Hussars going down. I think this is the last hurrah for Aliug. The native build is not going to succeed today. But man, is it fun to watch. It's so fun watching new units, right? I mean, after years of seeing Skirm, Goon, Musk, Falk, Skirm, Goon, Musk, Falk, so much fun in DE to watch units that, you know, haven't gotten love in a long time, finally get some love. But Kinesi's Aztec, speaking of getting some love, it was about time we saw a victory for Kinesi's Aztecs. I feel like the last couple of times we've had them, we've shown L's, and I don't intentionally mean to show losses for any player. I just take the replays that are the most entertaining, and this was certainly an entertaining game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me to the post game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the post game, and wow, what about? The resources are so close, and not even really a substantial difference between the two. Military count is a huge difference, though. 250 for Aztec, 143 for France, and the unit kills seem very even, a little bit even in favor of France, but you have to take into effect the fact that the units for Aliug were a lot more expensive, and the units for Kinesi were so spammable. So so in this matchup versus Aztec, this number, even though it's positive for Aliug, it's not positive enough. You need to be beating Aztec's military by far more because their units are a lot cheaper and a lot easier to just spit out. So you have to be killing them at a far faster rate than they're killing your units. And when we look at the units lost, actually in favor of Kinesi, 170 slingers made, oh my God, <laughs> three fourths of his army into slingers. I'm telling you, that guy has a deep love for that unit. And when we go to the timeline, it's going to look a little bit weird because if you go to the villager count, actually, both economies were pretty undisturbed for most of the game until the end for Aliug, where he lost a huge amount of herding CDBs. And when we go to the military unit population, it's going to look really weird because it's going to show zero military units, but that's because these graphs don't take into account native military units. So if we go to the native uh, military unit count, sorry, just the regular military unit count, now we start seeing the natives taken into effect. And that last fight for Aliug was brutal. 75 units all the way down to one. And you know what? I, I just loved this game. This was so much fun. And you know what? I hope it encourages you guys. Go out and try some stuff, right? Don't stick to the same build over and over and over again. Try natives, try mercs, Try Revolts, try H4, H5, H2, Rush, Turtle, Boom, FF, Semi-FF, Quarter FF, whatever you want to do, just go out there and experiment because that's what this game is for. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Have a great life. See you later.